Hi guys, welcome back to Scale Motor. Today we're carrying on with the Tamiya CBR1000RRR. We're going to be focusing on the radiator today. Um, I've got the radiator and the radiator fans all cut off the sprue. I'll be adding a little bit of wiring for the radiator fans. It's not going to get seen, but I think it'd be cool for you guys just to see how it is I do it, what I use, and then hopefully you can use it in your own builds. What I'm doing here is I've just cut the radiator off the sprue and I'm just sanding away the connector points where they connected to the sprue. First I'll go in with the 240 I believe UMP sander and then once that's done I'll buff it up with the buffing stick. Uh, you hit it with the blue side first and then the white side should start squeaking and then it looks as good as new. So all I'm doing here is just using the blade of the craft knife just to remove any excess plastic from where it was cut off the sprue. I only really do it on parts which aren't going to be seen uh, or are not prominent or uh, uh, non-mating surfaces just because you can slightly change the profile of the part doing it this way but it didn't matter too much on this part as you can see it doesn't actually mate against any other plastic. Next up we're going to be priming. Again, I'm using the UMP white primer. I always use this if I'm going for a gloss black base, just so I can see exactly what it is that I'm putting down. You'll see that the parts are already gray, and that's just because I went over them with the Zero Paints gray filler primer before this stage, just to get rid of some of the surface scratches which I'd introduced when I was a little bit careless during the previous processing and sanding of the parts. I probably didn't need to go over with the UMP primer, it's just I didn't get a full kind of cover with the, the Zero Paints primer. I just didn't really want to use it too much, so I just got the, the areas which I really needed to get and then I used my normal primer over the top. Next up we're using the Tamiya LP61 Metallic Grey. This is to paint the radiator. The bottom part of this part is the oil cooler and they are painted separate colours. Looking at the video in the background now you can see that it's painted in a gloss black. That's the gloss black base which I like to put down and the metallics. Unfortunately my camera didn't catch this when I was painting it. So that's been omitted. Not a problem though. It is covered in one of my first videos if you want to go back and take a look at that. Next up we are going to be painting the oil cooler. This is painted in Alclad dull aluminium. The manual does call out for the X16 uh, flat aluminium from Tamiya. But I prefer the Alclad colours to the acrylic metallic colours from Tamiya. The top part, the radiator, hasn't been masked off just because I'm going very lightly with the Alclad. And if I do miss, the only thing I'm really going to hit is the frame of the radiator. But that's going to be painted over again in a semi-gloss black. Yeah, here you can see that the radiator and the oil cooler are two separate colours. Now we're going to be going in with the brush and just getting the semi-gloss black parts which is essentially just the frame of the radiator. I could have masked this off but for the little bit at the bottom I didn't really see much point and I thought I'd grab it with the brush. The sides I did mask off and paint the sides with the airbrush. You'll see a slight angle change now in the video. Um, I thought that the overhead angle, while it's great for capturing everything that I'm doing, when I'm doing the smaller, more intricate things, 
it's harder to see and I don't want to end up zooming in on the video and losing quality so I thought I'd give another angle a try. I've set up a little mount on my desk right in front of me so I can pop the camera on and get the more intricate work like this. If this is something you enjoyed, if you do like seeing this kind of angle and this more close-up intricate work, then let me know and I can add more of this angle to my future videos. At the moment the lighting isn't great because I've got my LED lights set up for the overhead view. However, if this is something I am going to do more of in the future, then I can change the, uh, the lighting angles. Next up, we are painting some oil lines. I'm using the Tamiya XF1 flat black, and this is just for the rubber part. The main part of this oil line is a solid line, and that was painted in Alclad Chrome. So now I'm just getting the rubber part, and then next up we'll be using X16 semi-gloss black, and we'll get the two metal connectors on the end of the rubber part. Next up we're using the Pilot Silver Paint Marker. I like using this for bolt heads and that's what we're going to be using it for here. And the bolts on the bracket which connect the radiator to the oil cooler. And also, as you can see in the background now, I'm using it for the radiator cap where the water and the coolant would go in. The manual calls out for X11 Chrome Silver. I just thought this gives a nicer finish because as I mentioned earlier the Tamiya acrylic metallic colours while they do look very nice sometimes the pigments and the metallic flakes can be a little big and it can look kind of out of scale so I like using this silver marker because once it dries there is no kind of you can't see any flakes or anything it is just a silver liquid you can also see on my bench there a little sneak preview of the next video where I'll be building up the forks, the front wheels, the front brakes and getting some piping done. Now for the fun part, the wiring. Uh, these I'm using here are just left over from a previous detail set from Top Studio. They're just little resin electrical connectors. They've already been painted in semi-gloss black. What I'm doing now is I'm just using a 0.3mm drill bit just to drill two tiny holes in one side of the connectors. I'll be using two, one for each radiator fan. Once I've drilled the four holes, I'll pick them off the sprue, I guess, and flip them over and drill one hole of the same diameter on the opposite sides of the plugs. I'll be using the Rocket CA Glue Gel 
to glue the wires into the plugs. All I'm using is some very, very thin diameter. I think it's 0.3 wire. This again is left over from Top Studio Detail Set. But this wire and the electrical connectors are available separately. Uh, the wire, uh, it can you can get it from jewellery uh, suppliers. You can get there's many places you can get it. I'd suggest checking Amazon. Um, but all I'm doing is dabbing the end in the CA glue and then just popping it in one of the pre-drilled holes. There'll be two wires coming out of these pre-drilled pre holes. As you can see here, they're in. They're a bit long. They will get trimmed. But next up, what we're going to do is we're going to use some heat shrink. Uh, this, again, is left over from a uh, Top Studio detail set. But this is readily available. You can get it in high street shops. You can get it in Amazon. You can buy it specifically with detail sets. But all I'm doing is putting the silver wires in here. No glue or anything. Grabbing a lighter and then just running the heat shrink just over the top of the flame very quickly because you don't want to melt it and the the plastic will shrink and it'll hold on to those two wires the great thing about using this heat shrink is if you want a thinner wire effect you can heat it up and then while it's still hot you can just give it a pull and it'll it'll elongate and get thinner you can also as i try to do here but i realize my lighter has run out just run it along the heat shrink and it'll shrink it as you can see here it looks just like a wire now I'm getting the other side of the electrical connector and just drilling the one hole and I'll be using a, a length of wire. This is 0.5 mil wire but it is actual wire so it has a metal core. All I've done is just removed a bit of the rubber sheath which is around the metal core, dipped that into the CA glue and then I've just popped it into the hole which we've just drilled. this is left over from a top studio detail set but you can find these wires everywhere in old electronics you can even use old telephone cables and ethernet cables and they will have multi-colored wires if you want to use them for other uses now we are just sticking on the radiator fans once these are in we'll be getting the wires connected I don't have anywhere for the other end of the wires to go however once they're on, they're going to be hidden under the airbox, so it's not really a problem. You're not going to see them. You can barely see the wires as they are. I just thought, as I mentioned earlier, it'd be nice just to show on the video. So now we've got the wire in and cut to the length we want. All that's left is just to remove a little bit of the sheath on the metal cord wire. And then there's holes which I pre-drilled earlier before priming these parts, ready to pop the end of the wire in. And again, it's the same as actually connecting to the electrical connector. You just pop the protruding bit of wire into the end, into the CA glue, pop it in the hole, give it a hold for a couple of seconds, and it should stay. This CA glue I'm using this rocket uh, CA gel from deluxe materials it's the best CA I've used so far it's great it's not runny and it's great for filling gaps also next up we're going to be using the Tamiya panel line accent color in black we're just using this to give some depth to the radiator and the oil cooler the fins are moulded in, it's just they are quite hard to see unless you're kind of up close. So what I like to do with radiators and anything with this amount of detail is just flood it with a panel liner. Get loads and loads on there just to make sure you've got every kind of little, little dip. Um, just essentially replicating shadows. And then whilst whilst it's on there and all wet, I like to grab the cotton bud and just brush over lightly just to get the high points and make sure that the the panel liner is just left in the in the dips and the recesses. So 
So now we're just working on putting everything together. First up, we're going to be putting on the steering dampener. This is kind of just like a little hydraulic ram, which will connect to the frame and the forks of a bike to stop the bars wobbling at high speed and low speed. Just it makes it a little bit easier to control at higher speeds. This just clips on. There's no glue needed. Uh, you just push it in and you hear a click and it's on and it does move. And now we are sticking on that oil pipe we painted earlier. This was a bit fiddly because it was behind the exhaust pipes. So I tried first just to get it with tweezers just to get a bit more access. But in the end I just thought I was going to use my fingers. Easy enough. Just get a bit of the CA glue on the end of a cocktail stick. Dab it on where the part connects. Just push it in, hold it down for about 5-10 seconds and you're good to go. in the radiator I didn't use any glue to connect this up the top because there's two locating pins which clip into the holes and then the radiator kind of pivots on these so I like to get it in those holes first pivot it forward and then pop a dab of glue where the oil lines and the coolant lines connect to the radiator push it back hold it on and the glue will uh, the glue will set on the pipes and then your radiator is stuck and lastly we're just sticking on the last coolant pipe and um, this was painted like the others in the previous engine video I've just used rubber black for the hose titanium silver for the connectors and I've used sticky back um, aluminium foil just to replicate the jubilee clips but now that's on that's everything all built up there'll be a little clip showing here everything done um, i hope you d have enjoyed this video and you are enjoying the series so far if you do have any comments or suggestions or criticisms just let me know and i can look into changing things but in the meantime thanks for watching please don't forget to comment like and subscribe have a great day and stay safe